More than half the world's population lives in urban areas, but there are some people who prefer to live far away from the rest of us. There are stories of people who have chosen to disconnect themselves from the rest of the world, and who live in the most isolated places imaginable. So for today's video, we're counting down the top 15 most isolated homes in the world. Starting with number 15, Gasa de Lure Village, the Faroe Islands. So Gasa de Lure is a small village in the Faroe Islands that, nestled on the edge of Vagar Island, is surrounded by steep mountains, deep valleys, and the vast North Atlantic Ocean. The village's population, which barely reaches into the double digits, lives a back-to-basics lifestyle with very little reliance on the outside world. Historically, its inaccessibility is what it's best known for. For centuries, it was only reachable by a mountainous path, which, while stunning, was pretty treacherous. This path was trodden by villagers and the occasional visitor and wound its way over the island's high peaks, presenting a barrier that effectively cut it off from everywhere else and forced the villagers to be self-sufficient. The construction of a tunnel in 2004 marked an important change that provided a link to the outside world, and it eased the difficulties of transportation and communication. Even with this connection, though, Gasa de Lure has retained its sense of isolation, which goes hand in hand with the incredible landscape around it. With cliffs that plunge into the ocean, vast valleys, and misty peaks that seem to touch the sky, this is dramatic scenery that's both isolated and protected the village, creating a unique and secluded atmosphere for those that live there. This wouldn't have been possible, however, without the traditional Faroese way of life, which focuses on a deep connection to nature. The villagers, though few, embody a lifestyle that's in harmony with their surroundings, preserving their traditions and customs that have been passed down through the generations. Despite the modern connectivity, it remains a bastion of isolation, a place where one can step back in time and experience the raw, unfiltered beauty of nature. Number 14. Arunashtapi, Iceland Arunashtapi is a small fishing village located on the Snafelsnes Peninsula in Iceland and set at the foot of Mount Stapafjell and facing the Atlantic Ocean, it feels like a world apart, offering a serene escape from the franticness of modern life. It was once a bustling fishing port and a significant trading post, but with better connections to other communities in Iceland taking over, the village has now transformed into a quiet haven, home to just a handful of residents. This reduction in population and shift in activity has only increased its sense of isolation, creating a serene, almost untouched environment. The journey to Anastapi itself is a huge challenge, with the roads leading to the village passing through expansive landscapes, where the rugged terrain and vast open spaces serve as a reminder of how remote the region truly is. Surrounded by lava fields, steep cliffs, and the unforgiving ocean, the residents here are truly alone, and that's just how they like it. There are definite benefits of choosing somewhere like this to live, though, and while you're cut off from everywhere else, the natural beauty of the surrounding area is breathtaking, and it more than makes up for it. The area is known for its extraordinary basalt columns, bird cliffs, and majestic glacier that's visible in the distance, natural features that create a sense of being in a remote, untouched world, and the black lava covering the green fields as you move inland is amazing. Despite its small size and location, it does attract some visitors, drawn by its natural beauty and the tranquility that comes with its seclusion. For most of the residents, though, this doesn't impact their sense of solitude and their ability to avoid a wider society, making it one of the best places on Earth to sit back and just watch the world go by. Number 13. Capitol Hill Villa the Capitol Hill residence, which is on a hillside in Barvika, Russia, was designed by renowned architect Zaha Hadid, and at an estimated cost of $140 million, is one of the most expensive residences in the world. Considering land prices in the area, which is far and away from any sign of civilization, are relatively cheap, this shows just how much technology and ingenuity went into the construction of the building itself. Set across four floors, it offers more than 28,000 square feet of living space. The master suite is at the top of a concrete spire and is 72 feet above the ground, and the residents use a glass elevator or staircase to reach it. The lowest level contains the leisure facilities such as a swimming pool, fitness suite, and entertainment lounge, while the entrance on the first floor leads directly to the guest and children's bedrooms, as well as a library and other entertainment area. The owner, billionaire Vladislav Doronin, had the residence specifically designed for privacy and to make use of the stunning views of the countryside. But he's also very keen on high-end cuisine. To satisfy this need, the kitchen is better equipped than those you'd find in the most exclusive restaurants in the world. 
From the outside, the Capitol Hill Villa truly looks like no other. With its glazed walls, irregular lines, and unusual shape, it's almost as if it looks like a spaceship that's landed on the ground. While most of us couldn't even dream of spending as much on a home for ourselves, the design techniques developed for this structure and materials used could well become commonplace in new houses of the future. Number 12. Adamstown, the Pitcairn Islands The Pitcairn Islands are a chain of four volcanic outcrops across several hundred miles in the southern Pacific Ocean, and the only town there, which is also the capital, is called Adamstown. With a population of around 40 people, which is also the entire population of the Pitcairns because the other islands are uninhabited, it's the third smallest capital in the world. The islands themselves had been known to and used by Polynesian sailors for centuries, but the settlement that's there today was originally founded by a group of mutineers from a British exploration ship, the HMS Bounty. The town is named after the group's last survivor, John Adams, who was also the leader for most of his life. Due to its remoteness, it may be a surprise to know that the residents have access to television, satellite, and the internet. But connection speeds are so slow and costly that the main form of communication is made with ham radios. Visits to the island are pretty rare, although occasional supply ships arrive with food and equipment every few months. And while most of the residents live in one of the homes and run island life themselves, the main island, called Pitcairn, also has a small prison that was built in 2006 in response to a criminal scandal that one-third of the male population were involved in. This is absolutely a community that has shunned the idea of the outside world, and rather than living in a normal society, they've created one of their own, with benefits and consequences that have come from that choice. Number 11. Casa do Penedo Casa do Penedo, which translated from the Portuguese means House of the Rock, is a house that's in the open countryside between Fafé and Calorico de Basto in Portugal. Instead of being built from hundreds of bricks and perfectly shaped rocks, it's instead made up of four large boulders that, between them, form the foundation, walls, and ceiling of this home. It took two years to fully build and was completed in 1974, and despite being close to a wind farm, there's no power here, and anyone that stays here has to rely on batteries and living a back-to-basics lifestyle. What the house lacks in terms of modern amenities, it more than makes up for with the stunning views and privacy that it offers. There's no other sign of life for miles around, and it's become known as one of the most secluded structures in the whole of Europe. At first, it was used as a holiday destination by its owners, and then as a permanent residence. But in recent years, it's become a museum dedicated to its own history, and it's becoming an increasingly popular tourist attraction. As a result, it's been kept in pristine condition and could quite easily be used as their home again, and would be ideal for another family, like the original owners, who valued their distance from the outside world. Number 10. The Skidaw House, Keswick, UK There aren't many places in the UK that you would call truly isolated, thanks to the fact that the country is relatively small and you're never more than 75 miles away from the ocean. But there are a few properties that have become known for just how remote they are. Skidaw House, for example, is in a prime location within the Lake District National Park near Keswick, and at around 1,500 feet above sea level, it's surrounded by the rugged beauty of the Skidaw Range. Today, it stands as England's highest and most remote hostel, but historically has been both a shooting lodge and a shepherd's bothy. And while it now caters to weary travelers needing somewhere to stay, it remains an ideal place for people to go if they're trying to escape modern society. The journey to this place is an adventure in itself, and it shows just how remote it is. It's accessible only by foot or bike. The paths leading to it cross through some of the Lake District's most stunning and unspoiled scenery. The trek, whether it's from Keswick, Threlkeld, or Bassentwaite, involves several miles of walking through remote countryside, with no sign of civilization. With the high fells of Skiddaw, Blenthkara, and Kalbeck range around it, this hostel is surrounded by a landscape that's both imposing and inspiring, and the nearest neighbor is many miles away. This detachment from the modern world provides a rare opportunity for guests to disconnect from the hustle and bustle of daily life, without many of the things we often so rely upon. There's no Wi-Fi or phone signal, and without connection to the power grid, electrical devices are powered by renewable energy sources like solar panels. This back-to-basics vibe does, though, provide a number of positives. The lack of light pollution means that the night skies are really clear, offering unrivaled stargazing. And the landscape, with its plant and animal life, provide plenty to explore, whether it's through hiking, bird watching, or simply sitting and taking in those breathtaking views. Number 9. Sable Island, Canada 
Sable Island is a crescent-shaped sandbar in the Atlantic Ocean, and it's one of Canada's furthest flung and most isolated locations. It's found approximately 186 miles to the southeast of Halifax, Nova Scotia. This narrow strip of land, measuring about 26 miles long and just under a mile wide, is as far off-grid as you can get, accessible by only boat or small plane, and then only under favorable weather conditions. Reaching Sable Island is a challenge. This isolation has shielded the island from rapid development and industrialization that have touched much of the world, and its wild and untamed nature has been almost perfectly preserved. Sable Island is most famous for its wild horse population, believed to be descendants of horses introduced in the 18th century. The image of these horses roaming free across the windswept dunes reinforces this sense of isolation and freedom that the island exudes. And apart from the horses, the island's only permanent human residents are a small team of scientists and staff from Parks Canada and the Meteorological Service of Canada who study the island's unique ecosystem. Things aren't easy there, though. As situated in the path of many North Atlantic storms, Sable Island experiences high wind and rough seas, which have led to its nickname, Graveyard of the Atlantic, as a result of the hundreds of ships that has wrecked on its shores over the centuries. Number 8. Lukomir, Bosnia and Herzegovina Lukomir is a small village perched on a mountain in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and at an elevation of just under 5,000 feet, it's known as the country's highest and most isolated village. This picturesque settlement, with its stone houses and steep slate roofs, offers a glimpse into the way of life that's remained largely unchanged for centuries. The only way to get here is by a narrow mountain road, which is often impassable during the winter months due to the heavy snow and harsh weather. This limited accessibility has helped preserve its traditional lifestyle, as it remains cut off from the rest of the country. The residents here are a small community that's made up of mainly elderly Bosniak people who continue to live like their ancestors did. They maintain a pastoral lifestyle, tending to their sheep and cattle and cultivating their land using age-old techniques. Its isolation has safeguarded those traditional practices, keeping modern influences at bay and allowing a culture that is in close harmony with nature to thrive. It is a stunning place, too, overlooking the dramatic Rakitnica Canyon with stunning views of the Dinaric Alps. The natural beauty surrounding Lukomir is breathtaking, and again shows just how separated it really is, with vast areas of wilderness between it and the urban centers. Despite or perhaps because of its isolation, Lukomir has started to attract tourists seeking a unique off-the-beaten-path experience. Visitors come to experience the village's untouched beauty, its traditional way of life, and the warm hospitality of its residents. And of course, to escape society, even for the briefest of times themselves. Moving on to number 7, Elide Island, Iceland. The desire to live in remote places, away from cities, has only seemed to become more common in recent years. But how secluded would you want to be if you had the chance? There's a house on an island in Iceland that's so far away from civilization that it's been the subject of a number of theories about its occupants, and it still isn't clear if anyone actually lives there. The island itself is called Ilare, and it's an 11-acre piece of land that's on the northeasternmost part of the Westman Islands archipelago. Photos taken of the island show quite clearly that there's a white house on one of the slopes, with no sign of any human activity at all. Now, officially, the island has a population of zero, and probably was used continually throughout history as somewhere hunters would set up base while catching fish and seals. Local legend speaks of five families that lived in the house for over 300 years and sustained themselves on sea fowl and cattle, but were forced to leave in the 1930s as the remoteness made it impossible for them to live modern lives. Rumors remain that people still live there, though, with some even suggesting there may be an underground complex beneath the building. There was also the idea that it was actually owned by an Icelandic singer, Björk, who had been given it as a gift by the government. But all of these myths are nothing more than pure fiction. In reality, the house is owned by a local hunting association and can be used by their members to live in while on the island during hunting season. They can easily get there by boat from the mainland and use a zip line to get to the cabin itself. It doesn't, however, have any electricity or running water, so they don't tend to stay there for too long at a time. Number 6. Finca Bella Vista Deep within the pristine rainforest near the Pacific coast of Costa Rica is Finca Bella Vista, an eco-friendly treehouse community over a 600-acre protected site. The idea of this place is that individuals can build their own structures to spend their lives hidden away from society, but they can also rent them out to tourists when they're not staying there. 
it is an extremely remote place and one where you'll certainly feel like you're detached from the wider world, and it's probably the most impressive collection of treehouses you'll find anywhere. Each structure is unique. It's been designed around the particular trees that support it and its location within the community. Water is collected from rain and natural springs, electricity is produced by solar panels, and there's even a biodigester that takes care of any waste that's produced. All of the tree houses are connected by a network of suspended bridges and zip lines, and there's a central community center where meals are served and where communal events take place. Not only is this a spectacular place to stay during your time in the rainforest, but there's a variety of different activities nearby to enhance the experience, such as walks, wildlife expeditions, and the use of a stone-lined pool. If being at one with nature and experiencing a one-of-a-kind place is the sort of vacation you look for, then there's surely no better place to try than Finca Bella Vista. Number 5. Palmerston Island, Cook Islands Palmerston Island is the name given to a series of islets on a coral reef around a lagoon, which are a part of the Cook Islands in the Pacific. Despite being a part of a larger island chain, Palmerston is 310 miles from the capital city of the Cook Islands, and so itself it is very isolated from the rest of the world. It was first discovered in 1774 by Captain James Cook, and at that time there was no sign of any humans that had ever been there. From then on, it was administered by the British government, and in 1863, a man named William Marsters, who was a shipbuilder, moved to the island with his two Polynesian wives. Later, he met a third wife from another of the Cook Islands, and with all three, he would have 23 children. His youngest daughter died in 1973, and by this time, it's thought he had as many as a thousand descendants who lived on Palmerston Island, another island called Tonagoreva, and in New Zealand, and to this day, all of Palmerston Island's residents count him as one of their ancestors, each of which is part of one of three family branches having descended from one of his three wives. As you'd expect, a community with what would have historically been seen as an unconventional setup went to lengths to look after themselves and keep separate from the rest of the world. This ethos has remained, and while residents often travel from one island to another, transport networks have been established, so it can take days or weeks to reach anywhere else. Number 4. Itokor Tormi, Greenland Itokor Tormi, other than having a really hard name to pronounce, is located on the eastern coast of Greenland. It's one of the most isolated settlements in the world. Built at the mouth of the Scoresby Sound, which is a vast and intricate fjord system, this small town is surrounded by the stark and unforgiving beauty of the Arctic landscape. With a population hovering just around 450 people, Itokor Tormi, which is also known as Scoresby Sund, represents a unique blend of isolation, extreme weather, and traditional Inuit culture. And these roots are themselves subject to the whims of the extreme Arctic weather. The nearest inhabited area is hundreds of miles away, and the town is cut off from the rest of Greenland for much of the year due to sea ice. This isolation has shaped every aspect of life here, from social structure and economy to the day-to-day -day survival of its residents. Living there comes with unique challenges and a lifestyle that's dictated by the rugged environment. The harsh climate means that temperatures frequently plummet below freezing, and the region is plunged into polar night for several months each year. Despite these conditions, though, the residents here have adapted to the seclusion, continuing the tradition of hunting and fishing practices of their ancestors. Hunting polar bears, seals, and whales is not only a way of life, but necessity for survival, providing food, clothing, and other essential materials. The town itself is a collection of colorful houses that stand out against the whiteness of the snow and ice. The infrastructure is minimal due to the logistical difficulties posed by the extreme environment, and there are a few roads, meaning the town lacks many of the amenities taken for granted in more connected parts of the world. However, this community is close-knit, with residents relying on each other for support and companionship in the face of their isolated conditions, and they're bonded by their lack of interest in being part of a larger society. Number 3. Kinalug, Azerbaijan Kinalug in Azerbaijan is nestled in the high peaks of the Greater Caucasus Mountains and at an altitude of over 7,700 feet. It is one of the highest, oldest, and most isolated continuously inhabited places in the Caucasus region. And this ancient village, believed to be over a thousand years old, is not just a place, but a living museum showing a unique way of life shaped by its remote environment. It's surrounded by towering mountains with treacherous roads that wind through steep cliffs and deep gorges. Access is pretty challenging, especially in the winter when snow and ice render the passes nearly impassable. 
and it's this geographical seclusion that has preserved Kinalug's unique culture, language, and traditions, which are distinct from the rest of Azerbaijan. Its residents, numbering just over a thousand, are part of a distinct ethnic group with their own language, which belongs to the Northeast Caucasian language family, and is not written. Their isolation has fostered a strong sense of community and self-reliance, and a love of being separate to a wider society. The villagers live mostly off the land, engaging in sheep herding, farming, and traditional crafts, and the houses here, which are made of local stone and adapted to the steep terrain, show the ingenuity of its people in the face of challenges. Despite the modern world creeping closer and closer, Kinaluk has retained much of its ancient charm and way of life. The village lacks any modern amenities and luxuries that are commonplace in more accessible areas. However, what it lacks in modern infrastructure, it makes up for with its rich cultural heritage. The isolation here also means that it's surrounded by some of the most pristine and untouched natural landscapes. The region is a haven for hikers and nature enthusiasts, offering breathtaking views of the mountains with their snow-capped peaks and lush valleys. In recent years, Kinalunga has started to attract tourists now, drawn by its unique cultural heritage and spectacular setting. Yet even with this increased exposure, the village has maintained its distinct identity. For visitors, it offers a glimpse into a way of life that has survived centuries of isolation, and even with an influx of people, these ideals are easily maintained. Number 2. Ganthium Point, Australia Ganthium Point is an incredibly picturesque and remote area located just outside the town of Broome in Western Australia. With an unusual blend of natural beauty, geological wonders, and ancient history, it's perched on the edge of the Indian Ocean. This headland is famed for its dramatic red cliffs, deep blue waters, and its rich history. And among this, it's just one home that's the perfect escape for those that live in it. Despite its relative proximity to Broome, Ganthum Point feels like a different planet, offering an escape into Australia's wild and unspoiled landscape. The journey to this place itself is an adventure, crossing the remote and often unforgiving terrain of Kimberley region, and the area itself is accessible via a dusty, unpaved road. What makes this point truly unique, though, is its ancient dinosaur footprints, believed to be around 130 million years old. These footprints, visible only at low tide, link the present to the distant past, offering a physical connection to the prehistoric creatures that we know once roamed the region. The current landscape is also pretty impressive, seeing the contrast between the red Pindan cliffs and the azure blue of the Indian Ocean. The area is also renowned for its stunning sunsets, where the sky and sea are set ablaze with vibrant colors. Beyond the incredible sights, for anyone escaping the world to live there, the area is of great importance to the local indigenous people, the Yawuru, who have inhabited the region for thousands of years. Despite its increasing popularity as a tourist destination, Ganthome Point retains a sense of untouched wilderness. There are no major developments or facilities, reinforcing the feeling of being in a remote, unspoiled part of the world. And it's this lack of development that allows visitors and residents to experience the rugged beauty of the Kimberley region in its most natural state. Number 1. The Kerguelen Islands, Southern Indian Ocean the Kerguelen Islands, also known as the Desolation Islands, are deep within the southern Indian Ocean, and you'd be hard-pressed to find anywhere as isolated or remote. The archipelago, which is part of the French Southern and Antarctic lands, lies more than 2,000 miles away from the nearest populated location, meaning that there's never been more than a handful of people living there, all of whom have made a treacherous trip to reach the islands. Typically accessed by a long sea voyage from Reunion Island, the trip can take more than a week, traversing some of the most challenging ocean waters. There are no commercial flights to the islands, and infrequent access is the mostly limited to scientific expeditions and supply trips for the small French research community there. It's certainly not a place for anyone who likes being surrounded by people, and one where solitude is guaranteed. That doesn't mean there's not plenty to do, though, because the archipelago features rugged mountains, sweeping glacial valleys, and a coastline marked by steep cliffs and fjords. The island's most notable peak, Mount Ross, is a shield volcano that dominates the landscape, and the climate is harsh and unforgiving here, characterized by persistent strong winds, frequent rain, and cool temperatures. The isolation of the Kerguelen Islands has resulted in a unique ecosystem here. The islands are home to a variety of wildlife adapted to these conditions, including a large population of seals and seabirds. The surrounding waters are rich in marine life, making the islands a vital breeding ground for various species. Including the endangered Amsterdam albatross and the lack of human interference has further allowed these species to thrive, offering a rare glimpse into an ecosystem largely untouched by society. 
Human presence on the islands is minimal and primarily transient, focused around the Porto Frances research station. Scientists and support staff who temporarily live here conduct research in fields such as biology, meteorology, and geology. The isolation of these islands provide a unique environment for scientific study, free from polluting influences common in more populated areas. All of this means that the Kerguelen Islands are definitely not a tourist destination, not just because of their remoteness and the challenging conditions, but in order to preserve the islands. This isolation preserves the unspoiled beauty and the scientific value, and for the few who visit, the Kerguelen Islands offer an unparalleled experience of solitude, natural beauty, and the raw power of the elements. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.